So whenever you are looking for some kind of Goto tutorial, Goto course, whatever it is, you may find some of them that are super amazing, okay? They really provide a lot of amazing value and that's perfect. But because of different reasons, they sometimes lack more intermediate or advanced Goto concepts that are not covered. So in this video, I want to explain some concepts that are not usually covered and are super, super important with practical examples. So for example, this is a Goto game that I have here. So it's pretty simple. It's called Climb the Platform. So you are this guy. You can move left and right with, w with A and D. And basically that. You just have to survive. There is a total of three levels and you have to avoid colliding with the platform. So pretty simple, but it's still a pretty interesting prototype. So how does this work exactly? Um, what happens is that I have three completely disconnected scenes. So I have level three, level two, and I also have level one. So this is not bad. It's going to work for some simple example but what happens if then i say that for example i want to modify something so for example as you can see i have here three uis the current level ui game over ui and you win ui so what happens if then i want to add a new ui so let's call it my new ui and here i add you know whatever it is a new label for example and i want to uh, display this label in all the three levels so what you have to do is to go ahead copy this node Okay, go ahead and in every single level, you would have to paste it, okay? Because once again, these are three completely disconnected scenes. So how would you be able to fix this? And the solution for this is using inherited scenes. So rather than having three completely disconnected scenes, the idea is that they are somehow connected. So in order to do this, I will grab my level one scene and I will duplicate it, okay, with control D or you can right click and press duplicate and i'm gonna call it base level okay just something like that so i will open it up i will rename the root node so base level and it's basically going to be that in this base level i will just want to have one obstacle i will still have the obstacles container but just like this i will still have this flag everything that is to have so i can even order them like this and this is my base level so something pretty simple so now what I'm going to do is to right click on this base level and I will create a new inherited scene. Okay. As you can see, when this happened, I've got a brand new scene. So I can call it, I will call it level one inherited. And now what I will do is that I will save it into my corresponding levels folder. So as you can see, this has some differences from what we are used to having. So these are some kind of like yellow nodes. Um, and what I want you to see is this, let's say that I want to add a new UI, a new player, a new enemy, whatever it is. Okay. So I can go to a base level, add it. Okay. So once again, we can go and add this canvas layer with a brand new label. I'm using, by the way, control a, which is a shortcut to add a child node, as you can see. So it's pretty interesting. And when I save the changes, so if you have this icon, it means that you have unsaved changes. So make sure that you have saved your changes. I want to go back to level one inherited. This change has been applied because it is an instance. It's pretty similar to what happens when you instantiate a scene. Basically, when you do this, may, you may remember that if you instantiate a scene and you do a change to that scene, then it's also reflected on the instance of it. So this is the same thing. Now, the good thing is that you can actually apply overrides to this. So this is level one, but well, it, it doesn't make any sense because there's only one platform or obstacle. So I can go to this obstacle, press control D and duplicate it. So let's say now I will have more obstacles. There we go. And there it is. So I can move the flag up also maybe to give it some more space. And there it is. Okay. So what you can see here is that we have some yellow and white notes. So which is the difference? Yellow notes are the ones that, that uh, correspond to the base scene. And you can, for example, delete it, delete them. You can't. Um, and white nodes are the ones that are an override to the base scene, okay? Uh, and by the way, this only takes place in the inherited scene, in the instance, okay? This does, these ob new obstacles do not apply in the base, okay? So once again, we can go back to the base level scene and here in the file system, create a new inherited one. We can call it level two inherited and do something very similar. So this is level two, so it should be fairly more complex. So let's do something like this. I know this is, of course, just an example, just so that you understand it. There we go. 
And once again, it also has access to this canvas layer. Let's say that, I don't know, I want to add a new background. I don't know, let's add um, a sprite, okay? Here. I will add a new sprite and I will add here, I don't know, let's add a giant flag. Why not? Okay? So something like this and like this, for example. And when I save the changes, here I have the flag and here I also have it. Okay? So it's basically that. And once again, each scene has its own overrides. This is level two, this is level one, which way fewer platforms, and this is the base. Okay? Now, the next concept that I want you to know is about um, scripts inheritance. So we have talked about scene inheritance, but not about script inheritance. So let's take, for example, this game that I have over here, which is a 3D uh, platformer, okay? So I can move around, and as you can see, I have like different obstacles. So I have this spike, for example, I have this other thing over here, and well, which is the similarity here, that all of them, okay, they deal some kind of damage. So let me actually start off the game right, um, right from the beginning, and let me show you the console. So these are the lives, okay? These are the lives, so three. So when I collide with this uh, with this guy over there, as you can see, I was decreased two lives, for example. If I collide with these other spikes, I lose one life. So I went from three to uh, from three to two. And if I collide with this one, I lose three lives. So minus one, game over. So as you can see, there are lots of similarities between these obstacles. And the concept is quite similar and it's actually combined with scene inheritance. So in this case, I already have a base obstacle scene, and then these are instances, okay? So this is a base obstacle scene, which an area 3D, a collision shape 3D, and a, a model, okay? A node 3D, that's basically empty. And then in the different instances, I modify the collision shape to match the shape of the model, and instead of the model, I instantiated the actual model. So it is the exact same thing. So until there are no differences, right? The difference comes when we take a look at the scripts. So the every single instance has its own script. So as you can see, we have the saw script, the spikes script, and the spike block wide script. Okay, they are completely uh, like very similar. Okay, the only difference that you may see here is that you have an extends here, and it does not extend area 3D, for example, or character body 3D, it extends base obstacle. So what is this base obstacle? This is a new script that I have that I have created, okay, which is um, which is not directly attached to any node, okay? And I basically call it here with class name base obstacle. And what it has here is some um, some behaviors that every single obstacle has. So for example, every single obstacle has this export variable that determines whether the obstacle can rotate or not. When we play, there are some obstacles that rotate and others that don't. So for example, this thing over here rotates, but these spikes do not. But this saw does rotate, so that's the difference. And this is an export variable, so it's set directly in inspector. Okay, so if we go over here to spikes, as you can see, here it is, and I can set it. If I go to the saw, in this case it's on, and if I go to, um, to the spike block Y, it's also on. Okay, so there you can see it. What, what what else do I have in common? They have a certain rotation speed, okay? And this rotation speed is then used here on process if we can rotate. So it's basically used here to increase the rotation degrees. So I'm basically like that. The script is very, very simple, okay? But what you have to know is that, for example, okay, we have a function called decrease lives, okay? And then we have here a function which is on body enter, which basically connects to the body enter signal to detect when this uh, obstacle is colliding with something. So if the obstacle is colliding with the player, what's happening is that we are calling this collided with player function, which is completely empty here. But in reality, in the different scripts, what we are doing here is overriding this function. So we are calling func collided with player and we are, we are doing something. So what is actually happening over here is an override to the function. So remember that by default, this function is completely empty. So what would happen here if we didn't override this would be, okay, we have collided with the player, execute this, and it would just do nothing. But here we are telling, okay, decrease lives and with different values, as you can see. So this decrease life functions is basically this one. It basically does that. It gets the player with a group, 
and it removes one life, one, one life, okay? Basically, as simple as that. And it also has a parameter, lives to remove. And then, well, if there are no more lives, game over, which is another function, but as you can see, pretty simple. So you can see here how we are able to do something different. This is a pretty simple example. Okay, there are way more complex things to do, but you can see where this is going. If you have some kind of objects that share some kind of behavior, but they are not identically the same thing and you want to modify some stuff, well, then you should combine scene inheritance and script inheritance to make it happen. Now, if you liked how I explained, in the description of this video, you're going to be finding links to all my game development courses. So you have a total of three Godot courses, okay, to continue learning. And the good thing is that sometimes, okay, if you are um, fast enough, you're going to be able to get them with huge discounts, okay, because sometimes these uh, description links have ex exclusive discounts. So if they're in discount, okay, hurry up and buy them because, for example, this course is currently 71% off. And this one, I believe it's also 71% off. So just take advantage of that, check them out. They are all amazing. And I even have a, U a Unity course if you uh, use Unity. Okay, so just check them out. They are all in the description down below. And I will see you there.